Here's what I've heard from you so far. Personal responsibility, straight up. All right. And then number two, positive affirmation. I don't want negativity in my life. I don't want depression around me. I don't want weakness around me. Right. I want to be the best person I can be and take full responsibility for that. Right. Those are the two things I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. We'll go on further. I'll tell you a story, which is going to make me sound a little bit extreme. This is a story of when I knocked out my friend. Let me tell you a story. I was going to ask you this story if this is a true story. It's a true story. Okay. About your boy that showed weakness. Yeah. I got to hear this again. Right. You know the story? Jesus I, Christ. Right. So I don't yeah. like negativity in my space. I create my reality extremely efficiently. So no matter what bad happens to me, even in the middle of this shit storm, when me, my brother, my cousin, my team were sitting around, we're all smoking. The whole news is saying I'm the worst man in the world. I've been deleted from everything. They've frozen millions of dollars in bank accounts, right? Me and my boys are just sitting there just like, just laughing, right? We don't believe in negativity because if it's infectious and it's sticky. And even if someone's negative, even if you talk them out of it, it still stains the air, right? If you're in a trench and you're under fire, the least productive person is the person who goes, they've got too much artillery, we're going to die. Shut the fuck up. We all know. Shut up. That's not helping us, right? It's very infectious. So, and most people understand, they say, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah. Then why the fuck are you spending time with negative people or people who complain? or unhappy people, or unlucky people, or negative people. Stop talking to them. Everyone I talk to is like, yep, we are winners. All we do is fucking win. Oh, the Matrix attacks us. Oh, you think I need YouTube? <laughs> you think I need YouTube? Get fucked. That's who we are, right? So this was, a, this was when I was young. I was about 23 years old. I had a new girlfriend. Her name was Carrie. And her ex-boyfriend, I stole her from her ex-boyfriend. And if you're a man, you understand that no woman's truly single. You're always stealing her from some other guy or she's still half talking Especially to her. Beautiful. Oh, bro. She's half talking to her ex or she's dating 10 guys or always out competing other men. Right. So I stole her from some dude. Dude got heartbroken, had no emotional control. Like all the things we talked about. I was at her house. My car was outside her house. I was with my boy, Tony, my ex friend. Me and Tony are in her house. She's talking to her friend. I'm talking with Carrie. We're all having fun. It's Friday night. Four cars pull up. Boom, 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 boom. These six guys get out with hammers. Knock on the door. It's her ex-boyfriend. Carrie starts panicking. He's crazy. He's crazy. I was like, listen, relax. I go outside with Tony. The six guys with hammers. It was me and Tony, right? <clears throat> and they say, he goes, bro, I don't even give a fuck about Carrie. But you're going to say sorry to me. I said, sorry for what? Because you stole my girl. You're going to say sorry. And then we'll just go away. I said, I'm not going to lie to you, my friend. I'm not sorry for fucking anything. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then my friend Tony next to me. And when I said that, I swear to God, when I said that I, in real time, because I don't take my, my eyes off the enemy, right? There's six of them, but they're all facing me directly. So I, I was looking in their eyes directly. When I said that, I saw all of their eyes go shit. You ain't going to say sorry. So now we have to actually attack him with hammers. Do we actually want to attack him? At the time, I was like, I was British kickboxing champion. I was known in my town. They knew it was going to be messy, right? And I always, I had one hand behind my back as well. I had nothing in it. <laughs> Just, I had nothing in it. Who knows what's back there? In my head. <laughs> but I was just like, you had to do something, right? <laughs> so they're looking at me and they're like, fuck's sake. We thought he'd say sorry and he didn't. Now what do we do? And Tony pipes up. Fucking dickhead Tony. Hey man, why don't you just say sorry? And as he said that, I saw all of their faces almost lit up. Because he inspired, the other team showed weakness, yeah. inspired weakness on our side. And from, from complete capitulation, they were now brave again. Because Tony ran his mouth. I swear on my father's grave. I'm standing there. Tony said that. I turned, I fucking smacked him, strained his mouth, knocked him out cold. Tony, don't. Tony, my <laughs> own friend, my own teammate against the six. I knocked him out cold. I don't need you now, Tony. I knocked him out. I said, fuck him and fuck you. I'm in the house. And I walked in the house and I saw them all standing around outside with hammers, look at Tony asleep and go back in the cars and fuck off. Swear to God, that's a true story. If you're weak near me, if you're weak near me, you make me weak. I refuse to accept it. I give you a million stories of this. Three, two years ago, maybe we were in Munich. They called the police on me for not wearing a mask. That's a whole nother story. I told them to get fucked as well. We're in Munich. Wasn't wearing a mask, blah, blah, blah. We got drunk in the Kapinski, got really drunk, blah, blah, blah. I was drinking with, like, with some guys I kind of knew. In the morning, the police had come. They're threatening to arrest us all because we didn't fucking capitulate and wear eight masks. The Germans are weird. So we got in our cars, got in our two, we had two Rarys, got in the Rarys, we're heading back to Bucharest. We drunk loads. We were really, really drunk. We stopped at the gas station. We all got out of the car. One of the guys was like, bro, I feel so sick. Oh, man, I feel sick. He was walking to the gas station. I said, and I, I went up to him. My brother talks about this all the time. He goes, 
And I pat him on the back and said, bro, if you're going to keep walking like a fucking injured antelope, you're going to stay here. We drunk booze. We all feel like shit. I'm not walking around earth with some dude. Uh, the, I don't want you in my group. I don't want you getting in my car. I don't want you near me. When I walk with my team, you look and go, mm, let's choose someone else. Let's choose another group to, to prey on. You are the weakness in this group. I don't give a, yeah, you drunk whiskey. Yeah, you feel shit. If you can't turn it on for two minutes to go piss and come back in the car, then get fucked. I had a serious conversation with the guy. Tristan goes, you're so right. Why the fuck? Do you? And there was no threats. There was no, we're at a gas station. But I just, I can't even look at it near me. I can't just see people near me being all, or crying or sad or whatever. You're allowed to feel sad. Of course, your girl left you. You lost your job. You're allowed to feel sad. That's fine. You feel sad. You feel sad right now? Good, great. Sit the booze. Shut the fuck up. Me and my brother have another quote. What do you want? Therapy? That's our quote. We say it all the time for anything. Bro, I got hangover. You want therapy? No. Well, then what the fuck? You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Like, what are you, why are you even saying it out loud? Why are you believing in it? Yeah. Why are you making it real? We all feel like trash. We drunk two, 10 bottles of whiskey. We all feel like trash, but we're about, we're, we're high net worth individuals getting out of Ferraris in a, in a country we don't have security. Nobody's walking fucking like weaklings. It's, it's, a, it's a reality you have to cur- curate. And, and, and when you get your shit straight, it affects your entire life. And, I, and, and men understand this. They say, I understand you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Then why are you friends with all these fucking nobodies? Why are you friends with these losers? Why are you doing it then? You're ex- then you're accepting what you're going to be. I love winners. I love winners. Show me a winner. I love winners all day long, my friend. That's who I want to be friends with. Winners. That, that, that's who I want to be friends with. I don't want to be friends with anybody else. I don't see the advantage to it. And that's how I've always created my life. And it's served me very, very well. And, and I refuse to accept anything else because negative energy is extremely sticky. If you have friends who are talking negative shit, try and, try and, try and fix them. It's your duty. But if they're sticking to their negative narrative, you don't have a responsibility to them to a degree to sit there and allow them to pollute your life. Because mm-hmm. that's what they're going to do. You have to get to a point where it's like, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the entire podcast, click over here. And if you want to be connected with experts, influencers such as Kiyosaki, Tate, Connolly, Palminteri, myself, and others, download the app Minect, where you get a chance to connect with these folks by the minute. You get to by the minute or have FaceTimes with them, 15 minutes, ask them any questions you may want to have. Download the app Minect and start connecting with influencers and experts today.